All right, so, um, in fact, you know what? Just, just to recap, if you have a look here, um, you've got, um, if you remember this, PMAT. And PMAT is for prophase and metaphase and anaphase and telophase. Okay, and remember in meiosis 1, you are going to have all of these. And in meiosis 2, you're also going to have all of these phases. All right, so in meiosis 1, you're going to have prophase, prophase, metaphase, metaphase, anaphase, anaphase, and telophase, telophase. And at the end of meiosis 2, you're going to have four unidentical uh, daughter cells. Okay, so they'll be genetically unidentical but there will be four, all right? And remember with mitosis, you had two identical daughter cells that resulted. Okay, so prophase, metaphase, anaphase, telophase. Let's look at our phases. First thing you're gonna do when you get an exam is fill in your, fill in your label. So if we look at F, F is going to be your chromatid. Now remember, you've got a chromosome and I'm going to just draw one here. A chromosome is made up of two chromatids. And in the middle, it has a centromere. Now, the centromere, the way to remember it, is that the centromere literally keeps the two chromatids together, okay, to make a chromosome. All right, so the centromere merely holds, listen to my words, centromere merely holds the two chromatids together for a chromosome. All right, whereas a, then you've got, so you've got the centromere, then you've got the centriole. The centriole is the point where the spindle fibers will relate from, uh, uh, um, radiate from, and your centrioles are always found at the poles. And a centriole comes from, you've got two centrioles that sit next to each other like two little logs, okay? And that makes a centrosome. So the centrosome is made up of two centrioles. And the centrioles move to the poles, one to each pole, and it will radiate uh, um, your fibers, your uh, um, oh, for spindle fibers, okay, across so that the, your chromosomes can attach to those spindle fibers. All right, so you must know centriole, centrosome, and centromere. The centromere merely holds two chromatids together. And they keep in every single diagram, you'll see as we work through our questions that we've received today, um, as we work through these questions, you'll see every single one of them. They want to know the same labels over and over and over again. So make sure you know them. Right, so F is a chromatid. A, well, it'll either be the maternal or the paternal chromosome. So we'll say that this one is the maternal chromosome. Chromosome. And this will be the paternal chromosome. So remember, you are going to, you are made up of two sets of chromosomes. That makes you diploid. When you want to make gametes during sexual reproduction, which is why meiosis occurs, in the ovaries of a female and in the testes of a male, you, you diploid, you want to make it haploid. So when you join the sperm cell and the egg cell that are both haploid and you join them together, you get a zygote, which is diploid. So we go diploid, haploid, diploid. Okay, then C, centromere. And it merely holds the two chromatids together. And this point here, D here, that point there is the chiasma. All right, so the chiasma is the point. And the process, so I'm going to put this in a square bracket, the process is crossing over. And you've got to know both those. And then E, 
because you've got your maternal and your paternal chromosomes, A and B make up E, which is your homologous chromosomes. Okay, homo means the same, logus, location. So you've got, say, um, in our bodies, we have 23 pairs of chromosomes. And each chromosome pair is a different size, a different shape. Um, but one from dad, one from mom, so maternal, paternal. And they will have then contain this pretty much the same genetic information or about the same, the same characteristics. Okay, it says identify part F, C and E. So let's see, F is a chromatid centromere and E is homologous chromosome. So F um, is the chromatid, C was the centromere and E is the homologous but we pronounce it homologous, but homologous is fine, as long as you can spell it. So ho homologous chromosomes. And this is a pair, so you don't have to say homologous chromosome pair. The fact that you're saying they are homologous chromosomes means that they are, in fact, a pair. Okay, then, name two ways in which structure A and B are similar to one another. Now, if you remember, A and B was the maternal chromosome and the paternal chromosome. So one from dad and one from mom. So two ways in which they are similar. Well, um, they have similar shapes, shape, size, length, Position of centromere, and carry similar um, genetic information. Okay. So they carry similar genetic information. So let's say on your dad's chromosome or your paternal chromosome, um, that would be for blue eye color. And on your maternal chromosome, it's brown eye color. Okay, so they're both carrying eye color. They're carrying the same characteristics or similar characteristics. Okay, so this, they wanted only two ways. I've given you one, two, three, four, five, five different uh, um five different bits and pieces to come up with but I mean you can pick any two of those okay now describe the process that occurs in D now that process at D here is your crossing over so you are going to get this come either way you will get this in an exam okay you must know it there are only four steps four when you can memorize entire songs on the hit parade, I am sure you can remember four points. So here we go. Right. Um, number one, this is called crossing over. That's what the process is. And write that because very often that gives you one mark. All right. Point number one that you must know. Adjacent. Crow. Matids. Okay, so those are the chromosomes that are lying next to each other. Okay, so there, you see, adjacent chromatids, they're lying next to each other. That's what we're talking about here. So, adjacent chromatids of homologous chromosomes. Um, overlap, ay, 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 overlap, okay, so they overlap, now, point two, um, and touch at a point called the chisma, that's what D was, Okay, that's the point where they touch and they are now going to overlap. All right, your third point, 
So we've got one mark, we've got one mark. Right, now the third one is that DNA segments are swapped. Or you can say the word, or use the word exchanged, but they swapped. So they go from one to the other, they swap. Okay, so DNA segments are swapped um, between the maternal and paternal chromosome. Okay, so that's the important part. The DNA is swapped between the at the chisma. And that is very important, so that gives you another mark. And then for results in um, recombination. So we're now going to have a recombination. It's combined again of genetic material on each homologous chromosome leading to genetic variation. Okay, that is what's important. You have this recombination of genetic material and that is what's going to give you your genetic variation. So if you've got your chromosomes, your homologous chromosomes, here they are. So they would have crossed over, so you're going to have this from this one and So if this is the maternal, that's the paternal. The maternal will now have a piece of paternal and the paternal will now have a piece of maternal. So you have a recombination of chromosomes and people that, crossing over at prophase, that is what is going to be responsible for genetic variation. As well as, please, you have to know these. They ask it in every single exam paper. Everyone. Genetic variation is because of crossing over during prophase 1, because there is no crossing over in prophase 2, prophase 1. And during metaphase 1 and 2, you have random arrangement of those chromosomes, and it's in the middle. So it's metaphase 1 and metaphase 2, and that is what gives you your genetic variation. Okay, our last question here says, state the effect on spermatogenesis. Now, spermatogenesis is the making of sperm and you will do this during human reproduction so the, uh, um, the effect of making sperm in the process in the diagram does not take place so in other words if there is no crossing over then what's going to happen we're just going to have less variation in the sperm cells okay why only less variation and no variation well because we have variation that takes place during metaphase one and two when we have random random arrangement of the chromosomes and different chromosomes pull towards the poles okay so it's the two metaphase and the random arrangement of chromosomes and crossing over at prophase. So if one of them doesn't happen, there's still going to be some genetic variation. Okay.